Welcome to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. This episode we're talking about Rooted in Ferguson, and later we're going to see a movie by the same name. I wanted to introduce you to a couple of people who have been working on the whole issue of organic agriculture in Ferguson. I have Molly Rockman, who has been on, on Green Time before, and Molly, you are the founding director of Earth Dance. Do I have that right? Yep. And I also have James uh, Young, who is an Earth Dance alumnus. Now, what, what is, James, what are some of the roles that you've played at Earth Dance? Um, well, as you mentioned, Don, uh, I was an apprentice during the 2013 growing season, yep. is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that for, for the growing season. And then I was also um, junior farm crew supervisor uh -huh. of the YAB program, which is Youth Exploring Agriculture and Health. Okay. And that was over um, the last summer season. Okay. Okay, so, so Molly, what, what are some of the things that Earth Dance, you, you know, what is Earth Dance? What does it do? Yeah. So, so Earth, what's the history of yeah. it? Yeah, Earth Dance is a nonprofit organization that mm -hmm. operates an organic farm school in Ferguson. So mm -hmm. we're actually located on what's considered to be the oldest organic farm west of the Mississippi, the Miller mm -hmm. Organic Farm. Mm -hmm. And some of the programs that we offer are a farm and garden apprenticeship, which is what James participated mm -hmm. in both as a first and second year before we recruited him to be our um, junior should, farm yeah, crew yeah, member, yeah, our, our junior farm crew supervisor. <laughs> and um, we also have the junior farm crew, which is part of the Youth Exploring Agriculture and Health, or our YEAH program. Mm -hmm. Y-E-A-H. Y-E-A-H. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we also have a lot of um, farm tours and field trip opportunities for people of all ages, as well as volunteer opportunities. Um, we also, where our produce goes, is into a community-supported agriculture program where people mm -hmm. become members of the farm and take home a share of the harvest, okay. as well as the Ferguson Farmer's Market and uh, food pantries in Ferguson and Operation Food Search. So our food goes to a lot of different folks in the St. Louis area. So could we summarize all that by saying that people come from a lot of different places to work on Earth Dance and come to a lot of different programs and then the food goes out to a lot of different areas. Exactly. It is a true community farm. Okay. James, what attracted you to Earth Dance? Why did you first get interested in the, uh, in the program? Well, I have to be honest and say that <laughs> my wife found it first. <laughs> so she was interested, and um, she'll get what I think are wild hair ideas sometimes and say, hey, what do you think about this? And then I'll come <laughs> along a little later. But we had been trying to grow in our backyard and with a little bit of success, but just kind of struggling, you know, not uh -huh. knowing about soil and how to water and things like that. And so um, I think we were driving, actually driving past the farm. Oh, really? One day, and we saw a sign, organic farm class. And we're like, hey, that seems neat. That seems mm. like a neat little house. <laughs> we had no idea there was like acres behind it. And so we looked into it more. And we actually met um, Molly at a farmer's market. Okay. And right. she was really encouraging. And I found out she lived in the house that I, she lives in the house that I used to live in in Ferguson when I was a uh, teenager so in high school. <laughs> didn't know a whole lot about it before, but you, you got interested in it. Got interested in it. And mm -hmm. we, we had been on a journey to better health okay. um, for a while. Um, kids have different food allergies and my right. wife has some. So it, it was just, it was kind of a next step for us. Okay. So, so are both of you in Ferguson or do you come from different places? Yeah, we both mm -hmm. live in Ferguson. Okay, so it's uh, so the F Ferguson. It's not just an idea where people travel to. It's, it generally reflects the community and, and the interest that the community has. Because a, a lot of, as I understand, a lot of people who work there actually come from North County. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Um, we were actually talking about this on the way here. Is mm -hmm. that. Um, I didn't grow up in North County. I actually primarily grew up in West County, but my mm. family is from North County. And so I was interested um, in the area primarily because I have family roots there. And then as well, the farm has a lot of roots there, both literally and figuratively, um, for the area. So um, I moved to Ferguson in 2009. Right. You know, one of the things, the viewers are going to see the movie Rooted in Ferguson uh, in just a few minutes. And one of the things that really hit me when, you, uh, when I first saw that movie is that you have a lot of African Americans and whites working together at the Earth That's Farm. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and there's a lot of stereotypes that people hear about Ferguson, especially since the Michael Brown killing in, in 2014, that there's racial antagonism in Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this? 
and there's also a stereotype that, especially amongst whites, that black people are not really interested in healthy food. Uh, yeah. But but you, do y what do y'all find about people coming in and working together at Earth Dance? Um, well, I would say since I've been to I guess to address the first part, I have found that Earth, Earth Dance is a really good crossroads uh -huh. of of different people. There's so many different programs uh -huh. happening, um, and it. Uh, it, it, it really does bring a chance for people to come together on terms where they, they might not otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of racial tension in Ferguson, um, sometimes I think it might look worse from the outside than uh -huh. it is. Not, not saying that there aren't issues, but uh -huh. um, <laughs> I could probably go a, the, a whole the, paragraph There's a lot that. of black and white people working <laughs> together in Ferguson, right. but there might be issues with the police also. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and now in terms of stereotypes, and I think there's a question you ask, I, and I think the, the, the challenge in dispelling, well, the thing to understand and, and something that I found is mm -hmm. often um, people are not interested in what they're not taught. Right. And so sometimes because someone doesn't know about something, and mm -hmm. therefore they can't participate in it, mm -hmm. it'd be easy to get a stereotype, well, they just don't like it, there's, there's mm -hmm. not an interest. And um, when oftentimes it's, it's a matter of education. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, I, you know, I, we, we have had several black guests on this show talking about organic food and having good food. And so mm -hmm. I know in terms of eating food, you, you know, that there's a big interest in terms of, um, uh, of all sorts of people, not just middle class white people interested in, in, in having really good food. Now, do you find that there's any sort of barriers that African Americans might have to growing food? Mm -hmm. um, I would say if, if there were any barriers, it, it might be um, po possibly, it may stem from the fact that maybe there's a stigma behind getting out and working in a field as opposed to being in an office, mm -hmm. um, especially when so many generations have worked so hard to get educated mm -hmm. and to um, get a, a a further place in the world, mm -hmm. um, and then to to get out into a field and pull weeds or harvest mm -hmm. might be seen as going backwards. Okay, um, and so you and might, I've you heard might, that you know, and you, you you might have to overcome that with some of the people who are working mm -hmm. uh, in Earth Dance or working in any sort of organic farm. Potentially, and and I think even more so maybe for the older generations, mm -hmm. um, because there. It, not too far removed from my generation, mm. people had to. That's the only work they could do. Right. That people. There wasn't forced. a choice. Right. And if you lived in the South, you pretty right. much you, you pretty much worked on a farm. And probably and, mm. and even in the Midwest, you know, there was you know, if I go back to maybe my like my great grandmother's mm. era, you know, she worked really hard, and my grandmother recalls how she would just come home so tired and have to walk back and forth miles, you know, in heat and in cold. And she promised herself that once she got educated, she would never go back to working outside mm -hmm. because she saw the struggle that her mother had. She had to do it as a child. And so um, being compelled, not of your own will, I think mm -hmm. that can, would hinder, you know, possibly seeing the benefit of the empowering aspects mm -hmm. of being able to grow your own food. Okay. We're, we're going to... Uh, take a break to show the movie Rooted in Ferguson, okay. and then I want to get back to this co issue of commonality of experience and, sure. and, and empowerment by working together to grow organic food. W we're going to take a break and look at the movie Rooted in Ferguson and be back in just a minute. Earth Dance operates an organic farm school in the middle of a neighborhood here in Ferguson. This farm is considered to be the oldest organic farm west of the Mississippi. When the last generation of millers passed, there was significant risk that this farm would be lost to development. So that is when and why I started Earth Dance to keep this farm in production. In times past, neighbors would come up and they would buy their food and, and they had a relationship with Al and Caroline. I think this is kind of a legacy continued with 
Earth Dance, and I think it's even bigger because you're getting a broader spectrum of people who can take part in the work here. The mission of Earth Dance, I love it because we are trying to regain knowledge that traditionally, you know, was passed when you were out in the farm. What I really think makes Earth Dance unique is that we're in this suburban area where we have enough acreage to grow substantial amounts of food but we're still very close to a city and close to markets and close to people who have not grown up around farms. Earth Dance for me is a place where you learn. It's a place where you get an education in something that takes a long time to unfold. Something that you can't understand just by going to a six hour class on a Saturday. Here's a good production farm that's actually caring for and creating more value on the land instead of just taking and taking, um, as is so often the case with agricultural practices. In addition to all the environmental benefits of farming organically, at Earth Dance, there's also a number of social and economic impacts. One of our apprentices this year is Sarah Fitzpatrick. She's a second grade teacher up in Florissant, and part of the reason she wanted to do the apprenticeship was to be able to learn enough about farming to bring a garden into her classroom. I think at first I was trying to use the garden as like my science curriculum because one of our standards has to do with plants and life cycles and just how things grow and change. I'm seeing it permeate through every subject area. We learn a lot about the plants and what do you put, sometimes people put them in, how does it taste, we're, e we're even learning how tall does it grow. When you live in the city, you just don't necessarily have a chance to handle shovels and wheelbarrows. A lot of them have never seen vegetables grow. They don't know where plants come from. They don't know what they're eating. They don't know where, where, where it's coming from. Here we are in September and we have a garden at our school. So it's just, it's just taking my teaching to a whole new level. If we can at all influence something that's gonna impact them in a positive way, making healthy choices for their whole life, um, that would be amazing. Having those experiences on the farm where they get to see, taste, touch, all that good stuff is what lays the all-important foundation for when the time comes around to talk about life's biggest issues, to have a framework for deciding how do they want to change the world. It takes more than just one person to propel the good food movement forward. It really takes the whole community. If we as consumers want to eat this really good, healthy food that's grown locally and grown organically, we need more producers to make that happen. I never would have had the courage to undertake something of this magnitude if I didn't feel confident that I could grow healthy food in a sustainable way. And Earth Dance gave me those skills. And I'm really glad to bring that knowledge base to this farm and then be able to, to see it in action every year stronger than the year before. So Earth Dance is, is building a community of farms from all the different people that have encountered Earth Dance and learned things from that farm. The farm is so important because we don't come together as a community of life. So for us to do this and grow our own food and see our own progress is very important. And I, I like that we do that because I never had an experience like this. And it's really a good experience. As Americans, as St. Louisans, and certainly as an organization based in Ferguson, we know that we face a lot of challenges. And those challenges are incredibly interlinked. Here at the farm, we've witnessed how taking care of our environment, of the land, the soil, the water, the flora and fauna, is also taking care of people and supporting our community. And it takes all of us to make this happen. Guardian, like, makes me feel like I'm really good at something. And I know I'm good at basketball and sports, but like I'm doing something for the whole world, though. Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. Uh, we just had a chance to see the movie Rooted in Ferguson, which shows people working on Earth Dance Farm in Ferguson. I have a couple of guests with me who are very much, very familiar with Earth Dance. I have James Young, who is an alumnus from Earth Dance, and I have Molly Rockman, who's the founding director of Earth Dance, which started in 2009. Now, I want, we were just talking, uh, James, you were talking about some of the issues of uh, black people who had, who had wanted to get off of being forced to do agricultural labor 
and this might be a barrier which people really need to overcome, you know, in order to have a collective farm which is multi-ethnic. Now, what, the, the, Molly, you, you had mentioned to me on the phone when we talked about this, this that there's a commonality in eating together and there's a commonality in growing your food together. Right. Could, could you I think into- as soon as you share a meal with somebody, there's an instant sense of intimacy that's built. Mm. You know, like when we are wanting to catch up with family or old mm-hmm. friends, like mm-hmm. we always go out for a meal. So if we can think of food as you know, a way to gather Mm -hmm. and just a reason to have a conversation with somebody who Mm -hmm. you might not feel like you have anything else in common with. Mm -hmm. Um, I have found food to be a very transformative force in my life. You you know, it's it's really interesting that you say that because I remember the first civil rights struggles in the Mm -hmm. late 1950s and early 1960s. And one of the first struggles was over the right of black people to eat at lunch counters. Wow. And mm-hmm. so a lot of the racism in the United States has, mm-hmm. been, has been over saying black and white people can't sit down and share a meal together. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's wow. so, yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah so um, when you think about going a step further than mm-hmm. eating together, but mm-hmm. also growing food together, yeah. you can think about how you know, you're literally sharing common ground with people (laughs) who maybe don't look like you or Mm. who don't come from a similar background. I just, I can think of so many examples of people who have come to the farm as farm apprentices and, you know, maybe didn't have many friends who weren't in their similar Mm. socioeconomic background or who didn't have the same religion as them or Mm. who didn't look like them. And now, all of a sudden, ev- people are being exposed to folks um, that they would have otherwise never met, but in a place that is so peaceful by its very yeah, nature, it's, literally. I mean, you're right, on yeah. a beautiful organic farm, and you know, you're doing the same work. There's right, no yeah. distinction right. based on, oh, well, you're the white, um, wealthy man who owns a lot of real estate in town, (laughs) and so you are going to, you know, uh, type on a computer over here, and you, you know, grew up, and you're black, and you're poor, so why don't you do the manual labor? We're Mm. all doing the same manual labor, you know? That sunshine doesn't discriminate. Right, (laughs) right, right. James, you have some experience working with youth before you came to Earth Dance. Could you tell us a little bit about where you taught and what? Did did you teach agriculture in school? I did not. What did you teach? Vegetables were the fire of the stick for my (laughs) (laughs) life. My first year I taught in the Normandy School District at Uh Pinelana Elementary, as well as I did some um, summer school teaching at Normandy High School. And then I also um, taught seven years in the Ferguson Florissant School District at Ferguson Middle. Okay, so, so, so you've worked with middle school uh, students. So what, what subject did you teach? I taught music. Uh, <laughs> first, um, general music and then band for okay. several years. And, and, and so you, you've worked with, with a lot of the students that have... Are, are you, you're used to working with youth before you came in. Yes. And so have you helped recruit and supervise young people who uh, work at Earth? Who participate in the programs at Earth Dance? Um, I didn't help recruit, but I did. Help, I did supervise um, mm-hmm. a group of students at at Earth Dance um, in the YAP program. And what was awesome is just to see them come alive about agriculture. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that. And, and, I, and I would say I don't think they came in with any preconceived notions, but they came ready to learn, and they grew so much. Mm-hmm. And it was so awesome to see because in the middle of Ferguson, there's a farm. Right. <laughs> and they get to be part of it. And I think, I think, I believe it was a life changing experience for them. But it would be easy to just say, well, you know, what would young urban youth want to do with a farm? Mm-hmm. And I, I think what we, what we learned is that it's, it's something innate to the human experience. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, even if you don't ever want to farm. When you say innate to the human experience, all you have to have is like a two year old or a three year old. And they go out to where the dirt is. Oh yeah, there you <laughs> they, go. They, 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 and you they see they that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got five. Though, so yeah. Okay. So, so you see, you see that all the time. Okay. Um, so so what so the students who come there? Why do they come? Are there any sorts of uh, ways that they might want to get an education outside of the regular educational experience? Um, to come to the program, right? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure that they knew what, uh, many of them didn't really know what to expect. Many of them 
We're coming for a paycheck, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, a summer job. job. It's summer. a summer job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well do, do, um, when they come to the program, do, do they? Um, the, 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 do any come because they had a hard time in the classroom? Well, so there's there's kind of two different okay. parts of the or three technically of the yeah. youth um, program that we offer. Okay. So one of them is the junior farm crew, and that's the summer jobs program okay. where James is the supervisor and okay. mentor. I would add to okay. them. And then during the school year, we have um, we partner with McClure's Work Experience Program. And what does that do? And so they have um, students in the special school district who mm -hmm. have a hard time learning inside a classroom who come and spend their first few hours of the day um, at different work sites, and we are one of the work sites. So Okay, um, so, the, so basically the kids are getting some hand-done experience, and right. they might, might do better with hand-done experience, than, and they might have trouble in the classroom. Yeah, for a variety of reasons. But actually, in March of 2015, um, we started up yeah. our work experience program students again oh, cool. okay. um, at the farm. So. Okay. Well, let, let me ask you this. If a student is having a difficult time learning and might be having some behavioral problems in mm -hmm. school, there's three sorts of things that you could do. Mm -hmm. Tell me which one you think would be the best. One, one is you could give the kids psych psychotropic drugs and drug them into obedience. The second thing that you could do is you could put the child in um, a, a separate classroom and make them stay after school and punish them for that. Or the third is you could help a child work on an organic farm and maybe change the diet. Which one? Which of those? <laughs> which do you think, James? <laughs> That's a real head scratcher. <laughs> Yeah, because because I see that so, I mean, and that's one of the reasons I was so enthusiastic in talking to both of you about the program is that I know so many people who work with children mm -hmm. in schools, and basically what they're dealt with is either very punitively or they're given drugs, right? And as as opposed to a natural diet, which we all know can really be very very beneficial for the health and can actually help solve work with a lot of behavioral and mm -hmm. learning problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on that note, um, there's four things that I think are important for young people to succeed in school in mm -hmm. educational programs. Um, relationship. Real which we quick, because I'll tell you what. Why, why don't we save that for the uh, wrap up? Because we got to take a break now. Okay. And we'll be back. We'll be back in just a minute. Ownership of the land puts into motion Earth Dance vision for a vibrant community focused on food, art, relationships, and music sustainably. Earth Dance needs your help to make this vision a reality. Earth Dance sustainably grows food, farmers, and community, one small farm at a time, through hands-on education and delicious experiences. Come grow with us! Welcome back to Green Type. We've uh, been talking about Rooted in Ferguson. And, and Molly Rockman was just about to say four points of the Earth Dance experience. <laughs> yeah, four things that I think are key to working with youth in education. There are four R's. Responsibility, mm. rigor, relevance, and relationships. Mm. If any of those four things are missing from a young person as education, they probably mm. won't be getting as much out of it. Or they might have behavioral issues as a result. So. Mm -hmm. We try to incorporate all those into our programming. And, and so basically that's what a hands-on program does. Right. And one of the things nice about the Earth Dance experience is it's something which you need in order to survive. Yeah, <laughs> there's that bonus of food. Right, okay. Uh, James, what were you going to uh, You wanted to say something about empowerment and victim versus victimization. And, mm -hmm. um, well, I guess I would say uh, I, I think the, a lot of one going back to... Some, some, maybe something I was saying is a key to that is is educating ourselves mm -hmm. and um, and coming together in a place where we can start to heal right uh, because it's it's sometimes it's easier to throw a punch than to hold out your hand for a handshake and I just I hope that um, this can be a small part of that healing universe so fantastic I, I want to thank um, Molly Rockman for uh, joining us. I want to thank James Young sure, for joining us. I think we covered a whole lot of territory. Uh, Earth Dance has really impressed me over the years for what it's done, that it dealt with these issues before the crisis. I, I want to thank all of our viewers to watching this episode, and I want to urge you to tune in to Green Time at the same time next week.